Hello everyone. This week's video blog is about a question from a church member who wanted to know, I'm wondering why it can seem to take longer in the church to make decisions or implement change than it does in the business where I work. It's a good question. When I was in seminary, they taught those of us who were entering ministry as a second or third career that we were going to have to get used to something they called church time. Now, what they meant by church time is that indeed it can take longer for things to happen in a church than in other circumstances for several reasons. One of those is that in a church, particularly a Unitarian Universalist church like ours, we have a system of polity and governance that is far less hierarchical and structured than in a business. So, more people need to be involved in decision-making and in bringing about change, and that can take longer. Also, a church is a lot like a big extended family. We forge relationships in our religious communities. We have emotions tied up with our church. And so, even when one person or a few people can make a decision or could go about making change, it is often far wiser to involve many more people from the church so that folks understand the change, have a sense of buy-in, and feel they are still a part of that big extended family as it moves forward. Finally, in a church, we're often dealing with what's called adaptive change rather than technical change. I brought some notes so that I tell you this correctly as far as what they are. So technical change is change where the root causes that are leading us to want to make the change are often easy to identify. Whereas with adaptive change, the root causes are often more complex and broadly spread and harder to identify. Technical change often lends itself to a direct kind of cut and dried solution. Adaptive change often involves looking at our values our beliefs, our roles, our relationships, our approaches to doing church. Technical change can often be solved by an authority or an expert, and so it can be implemented much more quickly. Adaptive change has to involve the people most affected by the change in doing the work of making that change, so it requires experimentation, making new discoveries, and can take much longer. Finally, technical change often only needs to occur in one small part of the church, whereas adaptive change often involves several areas, if not the whole, of the church. If you want to learn more about technical and adaptive change, there's a great book called Leadership on the Line by Ronald Heifetz and Monty Linsky. Let me give you some real-life examples of the differences between technical and adaptive change. In our personal life, technical change might be going on a medication to lower our blood pressure, whereas adaptive change would involve eating more healthily learning to exercise more often so that we try to keep our blood pressure lower by making our health better. In the church, technical change was when we got a new copier to better suit our printing and publishing needs. Adaptive change was when we started moving toward publishing digitally more often to try to protect that sacred web of existence of which we are a part. Another example Technical change is when we had a congregational vote to approve the Eighth Principle. Adaptive change will be looking at our grounding and our theology, looking at the ways we go about broadly doing things in the church and at our church culture so that we can live into that Eighth Principle. I hope that helps explain why it can seem to take a little longer for things to happen in the church. Until next time, see you on church time.